In this video, I will show you a unique resonance system, how it is built and how you can perfectly tune it. It will then produce very high voltages and currents that are in phase. The circuit uses high voltage dielectric induction to induce the high magnetic currents. This is done by using pancake coils as capacitor plates. Tuning needs to be done very precisely, so I will teach you how to do it. Hi, my name is Ivo and I'm open source researching electric power magnification. The circuit can be seen as a Tesla coil with an extra coil connected to the high voltage end. This high voltage extra coil is then capacitive coupled to a high current coil that is parallel tuned to the same resonant frequency of the Tesla coil. To be clear, in this video I will show you how to tune the series parallel resonant coils without a load connected. I've made a scrolling step-by-step -step instruction at the end of the video. This is the circuit. On the right you can see the push-pull AC high voltage transformer, which is series resonant with the capacitor made out of the high voltage coil and the output coil, which is earth grounded. Underneath these coils is the high current coil that is parallel resonant tuned by a large capacitance to the same resonant frequency of the high voltage transformer. When the load is connected you'll be tuning blind as the resistance will dampen the current when it is out of tune. So instead it is important to first tune without a load. So you can see what you're doing. And from the data gathered, you then can calculate what is needed to blind tune it while loaded. I now use pancake coils that act as capacitor plates. And the pancake coils have the fields oriented in the right direction, so they can couple and magnify each other. It is important to remember that the high voltage resonant frequency doesn't change when the load is applied. So this is the frequency we will need to tune the parallel resonant high current coil to. This experiment will demonstrate how to tune the two resonant systems that are capacitively coupled to the same resonant frequency. One system produces very high voltages and the other system produces very high currents. And these high values are due to the relatively small capacity and small inductance. So here are the pancake coils, three coils. And two of these coils make a capacitor out of the coils. And the capacitor is in series connected to this high voltage transformator. By itself it is resonant around 65 kilocycles per second, but by connecting the series capacitor the frequency is tuned down to around 22 kilocycles per second. We'll see that in a moment. So this coil is a series connected coil that acts as a Tesla extra coil and at the same time it brings the high voltage from this transformer to the coil capacitor and charges up the field. Now what you see here is paper. It's just printing paper. Many layers and I measured them at 15 millimeters. The thickness sets the capacity of that coil capacitor. So by varying the distance of the coils which are the plates of the capacitor, I can tune that high voltage series resonance. Of course, when I have a very big distance between the plates, the capacity will not only decrease, which will raise the voltage, but also the displacement currents from charging and discharging that coil capacitor will not be effective anymore to charge up the magnetic field of the parallel resonant coil which is on the bottom. So I could bring the coil plates really close together. That will increase the capacity 
of the series resonant high voltage and therefore bring the frequency down by the increased capacitance. Of course, the voltage with larger capacity will be a little bit lower. And at the same time, when we're getting really close together, we will risk the high voltage sparking over to the center coil, which is the output coil. Let me show you that. So this is the high voltage coil. I made it from a coax cable, uh, which has a metal mantle and on that metal metal is a copper coating and that copper coating then again has a silver plating and that silver plating is the capacitor plate so that's very good for uh, conduction and the coating is made of teflon it would be best to remove the coating and have only the silver bare on this but i'll have to engineer that to to get a practical setup like that so here is the paper it's just printing paper. I cut off the edges so it wouldn't flap down and change the form. And you can see the thickness. I just measured it like that and it's exactly 15 millimeters right now. This is the output coil. Right now it's open-ended and I have the center winding probed for measuring the voltage that is being induced. This is a bifiler coil. So it has two windings on top of each other by using speaker wire. It's a 0.75 millimeter speaker wire that I'm using for this. And the bottom of that bifiler output coil is earth grounded on the outside rim. So the outside rim, the bottom winding is earth grounded. And that bottom winding is facing the high current coil. So this is the high current coil. It is made of four millimeter squared speaker wire and it is not bifiler. I parallel connected the winding. So in fact, I have a single winding of eight millimeters squared. So that will allow a lot of current to flow. Uh, the inductance is low and the resistance is very low. So that is the coil stack. Three coils, the high current coil on bottom, then the output coil on top of that close coupled. So the magnetic fields will be tightly coupled. Then the stack of papers, 50 millimeters. On top of that, place them carefully together. I made the coils so they could fit into my epoxy high pressure pan, but then I realized I could use paper. So if you use paper like this, you're best off to make the coil diameter not wider than the paper is. So I place it all symmetrically, so the coils are best coupled, capacitive and inductive. So that's the stack. Then here is my current probe. The arrow always points towards the coil, away from the capacitor. That's the way I do it. And I am probing the inside rim of the high current coil, which is the bottom coil of the stack. I noticed that the current is higher in the center than it's on the outside rim. It's not a lot, but slightly higher, and that's good. It has a parallel tuning capacitor, which you can see here. And I used 0.15 microfarad capacitors, and these are all in parallel. These are MKP2 from Wima, so polypropylene. They are rated for 100 volts, which is sufficient because we will get high currents, but not high voltages. And here is a smaller capacitor. It's a Wima 0.1 instead of 150. That was to fine tune it. And even that could be done better with a 50 nanofarads capacitor, but I don't have that one in stock. I need to order them and it works like this. So nothing else is connected. So, so basically this PCB board is designed by me and it's modificated again compared to the last experiment that I published. From there on it's a half bridge configuration into the primary of the AC high voltage transformer which has 13 windings of this thick copper wire and a lot of windings on the secondary which is all inside of this uh, isolated black box. The transformer is grounded on the high voltage side on the neutral of the power supplies. These are the capacitors of the power supply. And I can vary this voltage. The PCB board itself is powered 
by 16.6 volts and that's steady so the electronics has a different power supply and I can vary the voltage by uh, increasing a separate power supply. This is the PCB that drives the whole circuit. I have modified it heavily and haven't updated it into the computer yet so instead I will show you a flow chart that explains how it works. On the top left you see the TL4941. It has pin 13 set to hide which makes it a push-pull output. It is also the signal generator. It has a capacitor and a trim pot that sets the frequency. It has two outputs that are out of phase and these drive into the IR2110 high load side gate driver which is to the right. This chip is used to drive the two MOSFETs, in this case a IRFP460 and I've got two of those. And these are then driving the primary coil of the high voltage transformer. Now if you go back to the TL4941 on the left you see that one of the outputs, the red wire, is also going down to the 8 CT123 chip. This is a delay chip and I can set the duty cycle of the signal and I can delay the signal but it's still synced to the original signal from the TL494. And this HCT123 has a different voltage level so I use a bug boost converter to power it. Then from there it goes into a buffer transistor and to the second TL494 which I labeled 2 which is to the right. At this TL494 the pin 13 is set to low and this makes it a single ended mode which means that it switches both the MOSFETs on and off at the same time. So from the TL494 the two outputs simultaneously go into the gate driver which simultaneously drive the MOSFETs on and off. The duty cycle is set to 50% and the delay is variable. Once this is fully developed I will convert it into the computer and modify everything as supposed to and I'll test it and then I will be able to publish it for you all. We're gonna look at this setup. So AC high voltage grounded on one side on the neutral and it has no earth ground except for the center coil which is the output coil which is grounded on the bottom winding on the outside rim. And here's my high voltage probe. Before I had it probed on the coating itself, but that gave discharges through the high voltages. So now I just place it nearby, but not too near, like that. It's around one centimeters away from the high voltage coil, and that's enough to measure these voltages that are produced and the phase. So that is the yellow probe. Then here is my orange probe, that is the output coil. And in green is this current probe, which is set to a setting of 20 millivolts per amp. Oh yeah, let, let me tell you about this. This current probe has a problem. It has a Faraday cage inside to protect all the electronics. Here's a photo so you can see that. Now the beak of this current probe has the sensor inside. It has a hole sensor and it has a current probe. I don't know exactly how they do it, but there are leads going towards the electronics which are protected by the Faraday cage, but the leads themselves are not protected. So this is just a plastic housing with copper leads inside it and it picks up the very high voltages and displacement currents from this setup and registers it as current. I will show you that in a moment. I will then move the current probe over the coil and you'll see very high voltages being produced but that's not actually current it's just because this part has no Faraday cage. Okay the system is now running at a very high setting. I've got 4.42 amps from the power supply and 0.91 volts on the 
PSU. If you look at the scope, we've got 5.5 kilovolts, but the probe is, well, around 7 millimeters away from the coil. And the currents read 33.8 amps, peak to peak. Now I'm gonna remove the current probe from that coil and disconnect it. And what you now see is when I move it near that high voltage coil, then the currents go up 12 amps. Let me scale that current a little bit down. So it is actually a lot less than the measured current in, in, the, in the coil itself. But if I probe around in the air, you can see 9 amps, 8.5 amps, and I'm now 5 centimeters above it. It's 10 amps. That's, that's just a lot of current in midair. I will measure at the sides, so still 4.5 amps, something like that. 5.4, depending on how I twist it. It's always leading in phase. So basically it shows the displacement current. And when I sensitize it a little bit further to 1 amp per division, you can see here it's 8 amps. But if I move away, I'm going to go in the plane. And you see the decline very rapidly. Here is the at the capacitors. I'm going further away. This is about 30 centimeters. And here it's really gone. Let's measure that where it's really out of reach. I have to be careful for the high voltages. So yeah, around here. That's that's around 30 to 35 centimeters away. So here it's not as much as here. There's a lot more going on to the center of the coil. So that is pretty interesting to see because all is the same voltage. So actually it might be the true displacement currents that are flowing around that coil. Here it's near, near zero. Very interesting. So. so I will get measurements that are not accurate. But what is accurate is the phase angle. I did notice that that is correct. So that is the setup for now. Experiment, Experiment one. one. So now we're gonna take a look at the scope. Let me turn on the PCB and give it some voltage. So here you can see it is already pretty good tuned. I now have 4.06 amps at 8.1 volts of input power into that high voltage transformer, into that push-pull primary. What you can see is we got 4.4 kilovolts peak to peak in yellow. That is the yellow probe that is one centimeters away from that high voltage coil. So we're measuring 4.4 kilovolts, but in actuality that is away from the coil. So the coil itself actually is much higher in voltage. And how high, I actually don't know. I would say 10 to 15 kilovolts. Now in green, you can see the current. It is 30 amps, peak to peak. Again, that measurement is influenced by the displacement currents and the high voltages of that coil capacitor that has 10 to 15 kilovolts on it. So don't take that too seriously, but it is a lot. What you also can see is that the voltage and current are almost perfectly in phase. In orange you see the voltage of the output coil. So that is coupled to that high voltage coil through the paper and it reads it's 50 volts per division so that's around 450 volts peak to peak. And the frequency is 22.4 kilocycles per second. Now I can fine tune this a little bit better maybe. Yeah, let me detune it so you can see what happens when the, the frequency goes up and down with this setup. I'm going to use a little bit lower settings this time and uh, increase the amplitude of the voltage. So now I'm going to tune down in frequency. Let's take a look at the phase of the current. It is leading the voltage a little bit. So I'm going down in frequency. You can see that the voltage rises a little bit while the amps go down 
and the output voltage in orange also goes down when the amps go down. Now I'm going way down. I'm now at uh, 21.2 kilocycles per second and it's definitely out of phase. The current now is leading the voltage at minus 90 degrees. So I'm below the resonance frequency and the current is leading the voltage. Now I'm going to tune back up. Tune back up 21.4 and up. And there the voltage now stabilizes at the maximum point and, and it doesn't change anymore. But the current now becomes in phase. It has a very high Q factor, so it's very sensitive to the resonant frequency. I'm now at 22.2 kilocycles per second. Going up again. And now you see the voltage dips a little bit and the current becomes maximum. And now everything is perfectly tuned. The voltage and the current are in phase and the voltage is a little bit uh, less in amplitude and that is because the magnetic field now sucks in all that displacement energy so that series resonance has a little bit less energy we're resonant at 22.5 kilocycles per second now i'm going up in frequency again going higher and now the phase of the current is lagging and you see the voltage rises a little bit more again becoming stable while the current drops and becomes totally out of phase but now lagging the voltage at positive 90 degrees. Going up in frequency I'm now at 23 kilocycles per second and now you will see the voltage decline again and the current is gone and the output voltage is gone. So it is very sensitive to tuning. Uh, it has a high quality factor therefore it is very precisely tuned and actually it's a little bit hard for me because I'm tuning with a little trim pot that has around 20 turns with a screwdriver it's not that perfect but good enough. So here it is tuned again yeah that's absolutely spot on right here. Current is at its maximum Peaking at 17.1 amps peak to peak right now, and voltage is 2.3 kilovolts peak to peak, which is at one centimeter distance. Output is now around 250 volts, and I'm using 2.13 amps at 4.3 volts into that push pull primary Q factor. The parallel resonant high current coil has a very high quality factor due to the low resistance. It is purely powered by the displacement currents of the high voltage coil capacitor. The high Q factor gives a high amplification factor to the current but also a very narrow bandwidth of resonance. This means the parallel capacity must be perfectly tuned to the same resonant frequency of the series resonant high voltage coil. So now I'm going to remove one of those tuning capacitors to show you the difference it has. So right now I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 times 150 nanofarads. So that is 1.5 microfarads of capacity plus 100 nanofarads in this small capacitor. I'm going to take that small capacitor out and this will detune the current. Now let's see what this small capacitor, relatively small in comparison to the 1.5 microfarad, does to that whole system. Oh, turn the system on again and give it some power. I now have 2.20 amps peak to peak and 3.8 volts going into that push-pull. Now the voltage is basically the same, 2.38 kilovolts, peak to peak. But the amps are down and they are at minus negative 90 degrees phase. And the output voltage is also way down to around 50 volts. So now I'm gonna tune up and down again and we're gonna see what happens then. So right now I'm at 22.4 four or five kilocycles per second, which was the resonant point of the previous test. 
going down in frequency we can see that the voltage drops and the current drops so there is nothing happening over there this is 20.27 kilocycles per second let me go up in frequency going up in frequency going up and let's see if I can find that maximum of the voltage again that seems to be here and now the voltage goes down the current goes up and current reaches a different resonant point so now everything appears to be in phase again I'm now at 23.2 kilocycles per second and I have 12 0.4 amps. So the parallel resonant coil now is resonant at a higher frequency. And as a result, you can see that the high voltage coil has dropped to 1.7 kilovolts peak to peak because it is not fully resonant anymore. Still, the phase is completely in phase and we still have some voltage on the output coil, 200 volts. Let me go a little bit higher in frequency. Then the current again becomes lagging and everything quickly drops to lower levels. So this is 25.5 kilocycles. And basically the current is completely gone. I can't measure it anymore. So only 100 nanofarads will completely change it. And it looks as if it is in phase and, and perfectly tuned at that point around here but actually the voltage is resonant still at the same point at around 22.3 kilocycles per second that is the resonant point of the high voltage resonance it, it doesn't change when I change that capacity of the parallel resonance so I really have to tune the high voltage coil first and get that system going because that sets the frequency and I can change that frequency of the high voltage coil by changing the distance. So if I remove some of this paper, I will get a different resonant point for the high voltage coil. Let me do that. Let me demonstrate that for you. And I'm just going to grab a random amount of paper. Let's say this. A rough measurement says that I'm now removing around 6 millimeters so instead of 15 millimeters I now have 9 millimeters of paper this will increase the capacitance because the coils are now closer together let's see what this does to the resonant frequency I'll place the probe again on roughly the same spot let's turn the system on and we're gonna look at that yellow voltage and tune where it now is resonant and I predict, because we've got a bigger capacitance, it should be lower in frequency. Right now, I'm at 0.42 amps at 5 volts. And we only have 956 volts peak to peak, measured at 1 centimeter distance, at the frequency of 22.3 kilocycles per second. So I'm going to tune down, because I predict the resonant frequency will be lower due to the higher capacity because the coils are closer together and the coils are capacitor plates tuning down and you already see it rising tuning down 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 and it rises up it rises right now i am at 20 kilocycles per second and going further down it seems to peak out yeah that was the maximum so I'm gonna tune into the maximum again 19.68 kilocycles per second so we went down a few kilocycles okay I put the paper back between the plates so it's at 15 millimeters distance again we'll add that 100 nanofarad that finds tunes it to that correct frequency and now we should be able to get that high voltage and high current peak at the same moment in time at around 22.3 kilocycles per second let me turn on the system again this is 20 
2.35 so this is around the high voltage point current already is very high but not completely in phase now I'm going to tune up and here is that resonant point perfectly tuned of that high current coil when we get again have 19.72 volts with 3 kilovolts peak to peak and an output of 300 volts now let me just boost this a little bit more I now have the current in green on 5 amps per division and let me change the voltage also voltage now 1 kilovolts per division and I'm gonna boost the power and let's see what's gonna happen output goes up current goes up voltage goes up okay now I'm hearing the start of crackling of ozone production the power supply now reads 4.86 amps at 10.7 volts and I'm reading 38.17 amps peak to peak with a 6 kilovolts peak to peak in yellow and the output coil has risen above the 500 volts I can't read it anymore so I'm predicting around 550 or 600 volts on the center output coil very very cool to see but again I have to mention the current probe is influenced by the displacement currents and the high voltages because the clamp is not inside of a Faraday cage and again the high voltages are measured at a distance well this is slightly closer by I would say around five to seven millimeters distance of that high voltage coil and the resonant frequency is now 22.47 so it is almost perfectly tuned I could tune it even better by getting to that 22.35 where the high voltage is perfectly resonant but I'm happy with this result visual, visual test, test. So it's perfectly tuned now. Let me take a reading with my infrared camera. Here is my infrared camera. It's a Seek. I'm gonna point it first at the capacitors. So you see some points here and there are the connectors to the cables and here are the cables. It's still very low in temperature. It all looks good. System is turned off. So now I'm gonna turn on the system and bring back those high currents. And let's see what is going to happen. Yeah, so this is the high current setting again. And uh, I'm looking at the cables. It doesn't really get hot. Pesters maybe slightly start to increase in temperature. I don't really see development of very high currents in the cables. Uh, I mean, temperature is low. Uh, here are the coils. So that coil is a little bit warmer. That is the top coil. The high voltage coil looks 27 degrees in the center so that has some heat development but it's very 28 yeah it's rising in temperature let's look at the stack from the side I'm now looking so the bottom coil is the high current coil pretty hard to see well, it actually looks good it doesn't show really increase of temperature in the center does read 50 degrees celsius so that actually is increasing is that the paper it looks like the paper is heating up the bottom coil the high current coil actually looks cooler 24 degrees celsius now let's check the capacitors again yeah they're heating up a little bit they they're getting a little bit hotter well it's it's nothing it's really nothing compared to what it was before it does read to be a little bit warmer than the ambient temperature which is perfectly fine and the cables also yeah they they don't produce any heat yeah okay that's clear experiment part 2
The setup is now the same, but now the square wave is introduced to the high current coil. Okay, I have now connected this according to this schematic. So this is the coil. It's bifiler made of two times 1.5 millimeter squared. And here is the diode with the fan that I did not connect because it's not needed. And it's connected to the capacitor board. Here's also the charge and discharge capacitor. And here is a coax cable that connects it to the MOSFET for discharging. And here is the cable to the other MOSFET, which is connected to the coil. And the coil itself is connected to the positive voltage supply. So now I'm able to use that coil as a boost converter to charge up this one and a ferret capacitor. And with the square wave, when the MOSFET turns off, charges, and when the MOSFET turns on, it discharges. So these two MOSFETs are simultaneously switching on and off. Let us take a look at how that looks. For that, I will connect an extra probe in blue and I will connect it to the discharge MOSFET drain so we can see how that behaves. And to be clear, the current coil is connected to that capacitor and the capacitor is connected on the inside rim. So the discharge is on the outside rim. So we, we really are discharging that one nanofarad through the current coil. And now we're gonna look at the system. Here we have around 20 amps peak to peak in green. And we have in yellow the high voltage 3.2 kilovolts peak to peak. Input power is now 2.54 amps at 5.0 volts. In blue you now can see the discharge signal. And what you see here is a resonant half wave. If I now give my second PSU some power, we're gonna power up that coil, that extra boost converter coil and make it work so it turns into a square wave. Let's do that. There it is. I can easily generate 100 to 150 volts. It charges up a little bit slower than it's discharging. And that discharge, let me zoom into that, is very rapid. It has around 80 nanoseconds of discharge. And then there is a slight period of ringing. And now we're going to look at the charge time, which will be slower because this is part of a resonance system of the boost converter coil, which takes around one microsecond. So that is the charge time, very slow relatively compared to the discharge time, which is very fast and rings a little bit more. Notice that only the half wave is allowed and that is because the body diode blocks the positive voltages but passes through the negative voltages. By the way, in the bottom right corner you see that the duty cycle of this signal is now 50.3. And now I'm gonna change the delay and we're gonna see what happens if I change this setup. I'm going to delay to the right. What you can see is that the current is changing. It's changing in phase and it starts decreasing together with the output coil. So I can tune that current in green and the orange output voltage follows until it becomes zero around here. Now there is no current anymore. The power supply now reads 2.9 amps peak to peak at 5 volts. And we have 3.6 kilovolts. Now let's continue further to the right. Still no current possible due to the discharging MOSFET and charging MOSFET that is connected to that high current coil. And now we should be able to get some current again because I'm delaying so so far that it is allowed again and yes indeed the current now is building up again together with that output voltage and here we come in phase again and the current is maximum again 
So now we're at the same position right there. So current and voltage are perfectly in phase again and we are at the same values. The voltage, the high voltage has dropped a little bit again to 3.1 kilovolts. Uh, the power supply is now at 2.46 amps at 5.0 volts. And the current is back to 20 amps peak to peak. So that is the behavior without a load and when it is fully resonant. So fully resonant with that I mean it is tuned whereby the series resonant high voltage is resonant at the same frequency as the parallel resonant high current coil. And as you can see with the positive voltage the square wave goes high and with the negative voltage maximum of the high voltage coil in yellow, the voltage goes low on the square wave. So the really fast discharge is happening at the negative maximum. I now removed all the electronics again from the high current coil and I even removed the capacitance, which you can see here. I'll show you in close. It's just a board with some connectors and I put a lot of leads in it so I can hook it up to the high current coil with a lot of cables. It's just a Frankenstein design but it works. And I'm now measuring the inductance of the high current coil while the load is not connected. Let's set it to 10 kilocycles per second and now we measure 31.33 micro henrys for that high current coil. Now if I shortcut the output coil now, then the inductance changes suddenly. So now it reads around 8.13 micro henrys. So it's a lot less when that coil is completely shorted out. If I put a resistive load over it, it will thus change the inductance. And by changing the inductance of the high current coil, we are detuning it and we will need to add more capacitance to get it resonant again at that same frequency of resonance of that high voltage coil. So that is important to remember. By adding a load, the inductance of the high current coil will change. I will open up the lead again and now it jumps back to 31.32 microhenries, measured at 10 kilocycles per second. Inductance is a very good tool to be able to calculate how much parallel capacitance you would need with the connected load. But keep in mind, if that load changes in resistance, you will also need a different capacitor to tune that changed inductance to the same resonant frequency of that high voltage coil again. Now let's also measure the exact amount of capacitance and I simply put it in parallel where the coil would be connected and I put it down. I'm going to turn the system on again and this measures as a capacitance of 1581 nanofarads. So around 1.6 microfarads in total. So it is very close in range. It's very good. The measurement is very good. Conclusion. So now you know how to tune a series parallel resonance system and get very high in phase voltages and currents. If you want to fund or donate my research, click the link in the video description or scan the QR code or use the link displayed in the bottom of the screen. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. There will now follow a scrolling instruction for the tuning procedure.